Welcome to Healthcare's Missing Link, a weekly podcast to help you uncover hidden things that steal your health. Thanks for joining us today. Here's your host, Dr. Mark Sherwood. And uh, we are fortunate, blessed today to welcome an old friend of mine, uh, Brad Tuttle. Before I introduce him, let me tell you a little about him. He's got a a heck of a bio. I was telling him prior to going on how I admired him for his consistency. So Brad and his husband, Jan, or his wife, Janet, they have a passion for evangelism. That's a great intro there, wasn't it? Passion yeah. for evangelism and uh, discipling God's people in the word. And there's a driving force behind Brad Tuttle Ministries. They co-pastor Harvest Church International, a home-based church, and host Brad's YouTube channel, Shooting Straight with Brad Tuttle. The driving force behind their ministry to their church and abroad is found in their unique salvation experiences. And I'm going to have Brad tell about those things uh, when he comes on. And Brad actually is a veteran. So we, we honor veterans here, as you know. He served his country in the Navy as a Navy diver, has received his doctorate in biblical studies from Masters International University of Divinity. His Wife, Jan, has received a Bachelor's of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies. Um, Brad, welcome. Thank you for the food, Paul, for laughing. It's awesome. So, man, it's good to connect. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm really honored to be on here with you. You look great, too, by the way. Thank you. I uh, The last time we saw each other, we were um, doing some Feats of Strength Ministries. Um, That's right. Uh, for we Team Extreme, right? We can still do it, right? Ah, absolutely. I, I actually did one about two years ago just for the, uh, we have a big groups here and I did one. It's like, I hadn't missed a beat, but I don't need to be doing it all the time. That's right. Because I was pretty sore the next day. I did the bricks, the handcuffs, the bats and oh. all that. I was like, oh my, wow. We used to do that like every night, five nights a week and multiple times a day on the yep. power team. Remember those days? Oh yeah, man. It's just your body just you don't think about it. So maybe you get a little bit older. You start thinking, okay, now I know why my shoulders, because I've bent a thousand steel bars in my teeth or snapped 10,000 or more baseball bats. So, so it catches up to you, but you know, I stay fit. So it's all good. And you stay fit physically, I know, but you also stay fit spiritually. And, and as I was telling you, and I'm telling listeners now, one of the most consistent, um, people that I've known over the years and known of it is you, Brad, you've been very consistent in your ministry and your passion. And I, I honor that. And I appreciate that. And I, I kind of want to get to the core of it. What is it that drives you to become such um, a spiritual, um, you know, pastor and leader and speaker? What is that driving force? Well, it comes from my salvation experience. You know, I grew up knowing nothing about Christ, I was never witnessed to for basically 25 years of my life. And I thought I was going to heaven because I was an American. I had no idea about anything, the cross. I used to go to nativity scenes at Christmas time when I was in high school, you know, drinking and beer in my hands. I didn't think anything about it. I went into the military, still no one had witnessed to me. I, I, I'm from a I was from a suburban neighborhood with a church on every single corner and no one, you know, authentically, or I don't ever remember anybody talking to me about Christ. I was in the FCA in high school. You remember that fellowship of Christian I athletes? Because I wanted my picture in the, you know, when I, when did I, wasn't that I was a Christian. I just got my picture, you know. You wanted an FCA certificate or something, I guess. That's right. So I was get I was in the Navy when I was getting out of the Navy. This is, and I use this as a sermon for people or an instigation to people when I was getting out I was in San Diego, California, and I was coming back from eating breakfast. I was going to be, uh, you know, uh, with all the paperwork, I'll be out in a couple of days. When I was walking back, beautiful sunny day in San Diego, I remember I heard this guy, somebody running up from behind me. And I and I, I emphasize the word running. And next thing I know, this lanky little dude comes running around and he stops right next to me and he starts to talk to me. And not knowing it at the time, but he's not, I, I not, years later after being saved and realized what he's doing, he was he was doing the evangelistic thing on me. He's asking me, what do I think about the world? You know, what do I, you know, what's my purpose in life? And he's asking me all these things, which I'm like going, I'm just getting out. I'm going home. I don't know, man, leave me alone. <laughs> and so he kept doing it. He kept walking. He kept walking. 
And uh, finally, you know, I think he saw that maybe I was aggravated or something, but finally he literally jumped in front of me and stopped and shared the gospel with me. And when he got done, and it was a good, clear gospel message. And when he was done, he simply said, I just want to tell you before I go, Jesus loves you. And man, boom, there it was gone. And I don't know, you know, I, sh I have shared this all over the world. And I don't know, maybe one day, if not, I'll meet him in heaven. But so mm -hmm. when he witnessed to me, I didn't get saved then, but something did happen because I got back into my barracks and there was a guy playing a boom box. Of course, that ages me a little bit, but he had a boom box <laughs> in, the bunk, in the bunk next to me. And he was playing that ACDC song, You're on a Highway to Hell. You know, and that was like one of my driving songs and I'm powerlifting in the gym, you know. And so I sat on the bunk and for the first time in my life, I thought, man, am I? I never thought something like that before. Mm -hmm. So I called my mom and I was all excited about this because I said, you know, mom, this guy talked to me about God. And she goes, well, that's good. Just come on home and kind of like blew that off, you know. And so I got home. And when I got home, I kind of got involved in the whole powerlifting thing. And that's my first stepping into really competing and I got really big and you know I'm like 325 pounds and squatting a lot and deadlifting a lot I won meets and all this stuff anyway um I got invited to a to a nightclub uh grand opening of this nightclub in Cincinnati because I was big literally I got mm -hmm. notoriety because I was really big and strong yeah. so all my friends ended up being athletes and so they invited me to this thing and I'm sitting in this nightclub which I wasn't a big nightclub person anyway because I wasn't like a big wanting to go out and dance or anything <laughs> I had a gigantic Most big guys have no rhythm oh, I'm just telling yeah, you I, I had a big old butt and I wore cowboy boots and Wrangler jeans it wasn't a good thing on, on the dance floor and uh so I was sitting at the bar stool and with a beer bottle in my hand and someone now that I realize when I look back, someone was praying for me because sitting on the bar stool is like my eyes had window shades on them. And it and in and, and this moment, the window shades rolled off my eyes and I'm looking around this room that's dark and and I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I mean, it just hit me like a bolt. What am I doing here? What am I doing with my life? Why am I why am I why am I engaged in this stuff? Kind of got me sick to my stomach. So I I literally got out of there, got in my car, left there about 1030 got back to my apartment. It's about 15, 20 minutes away. And from about, you know, 1030 to about 130 in the morning, I was in my apartment, just like, I, I didn't know what was going on. I, I'm not knowing it was this conviction of the Holy Spirit was moving on my heart. And I'm just angry and I'm punching things and I'm, you know, getting, I'm just mad. What is going on? Mm -hmm. And then finally at 130 in the morning, around that time, I walked into my bedroom. I don't know why it was my bedroom, but I walked into my bedroom. And I knelt down next to my bed and that guy's gospel message came back to me and it just hit me on my face. I was a sinner and I needed Christ to be my savior and I was lost without him. And so in that moment in my life, 325 pound power lifter, you know, kneeling by my bed with my hands raised up in the air. I just repented for my sins. I believed upon Christ. I trusted him with my heart and I wept my way for two hours mm -hmm. uh, into my salvation. And I was radical from the moment I did it and maybe a 90 second prayer. Boom. I was radically transformed. And that's always been the driving force for me because I know, I know that something truly happened in my life. I felt I didn't feel the same. It wasn't just an emotional thing. I knew, not even knowing theologically what had happened, but I knew that, that I, I almost, it's like, I didn't know what was going on, but that the spirit of God came in me because my eyes were open to new things. And, and I, and I started changing things immediately. Of course, not everything. We don't change everything immediately, but there's things that I stopped doing. And, and I just had this real drive. So mm -hmm. that was on an early Sunday morning. And I woke up Sunday morning and I thought, well, I guess I need to go to church. And I mean, I could have ended up in any church for all I know. I mean, it could have been a church of the whatever, church of the pine tree. But, <laughs> I ended up, you know, Holy Spirit took me to and took me to a Pentecostal church. And that's the that's the place I went into. But what was great about it is that they let me they let me be energetic and passionate about my salvation. So he put me there for a purpose because I was allowed to release my exuberance that I yeah. am now born again. And man, it just came out of me. And I, you know, I would, I'd scream and shout and run. And I mean, I was just so excited about being saved. And so that helped me with that. And then, uh, 
I was serving God and I'll just continue on just real quick. And I'll, you asked me what the drive you for is. So I'm, I'm continuing on. I'm on fire for God. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm not the same person I used to be. My life is changing. Everything is just, you know, but I did go like this, like many new Christians will do because I had not grabbed a hold of the word yet. And I had not grabbed a hold of prayer yet. So although I was sitting in the front row, because I thought I thought sitting in the back wasn't the place to be. So I sit in the front rows. I thought that's where the fire was. <laughs> you know, so that's I wanted to, and I got I got the young people so fired up in there because I was so fired up, you know, about being born again. And they got all fired up and everybody else got fired up. And anyway, so I was going this kind of a little bit of a roller coaster, you know, I'd be up and down and going through that whole kind of spiel, you know, as we're living out our life in Christ. And then the church was going to start an early morning prayer meeting. And I thought I need to go to that. So it wasn't a big church. So I think about 70 people started. They were going to start this at six in the morning. And remember, I, and mind you, I, I, I worked at an environmental laboratory. So I, I co-managed a lab and I still try to get in workouts. So I would get up at like five o'clock in the morning. Someone would, someone gave me a prayer outline. I don't know if you remember that. Could you not tarry one hour? Remember Dr. Oh, yeah. Larry had that. Well, he gave me, the pastor gave me this card that had the Lord's prayer written out on it. And I remember I'd never prayed really, you know, not really like prayed. I walked in that little tiny church with that blue velvet, crushed velvet pew, you know, coverings and duct tape on the floor. And it was dark. And I remember taking that, taking that prayer card and laying it on the pew and kneeling down with the music playing. And I prayed, I didn't even realize how long I was there, but when I looked up, I'd been praying for an hour. Mm. When that happened to me, I, I cannot describe what it was like when I got done, I was driving my car to work and I felt like I was floating on a cloud that my salvation experience was transforming. My connecting into what prayer can do was transforming. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, early morning prayer became that staple in my life that took this away. It mm -hmm. took all it took that up and down and started to level that out. I really started to see the power of God operating more in my life. I just felt different. Um, I, I didn't think about being in the ministry. I just loved God and I loved the job I was doing. But that early morning prayer and the reason you talk about being consistent, the consistency mm -hmm. comes from I've never lost that. Yeah, there's always a driving thing in me. You've got to pray. You've got to pray. And if I don't do it, I lose connection with the father from my side. And there's something missing. I feel out of joint. So I, I'm driven to always pray and to spend time with God. Even in a busy life, you still got to spend time with God and have that quiet abiding in his presence. That's what kept me consistent. The fact that I got converted and it was so transforming that I know I'm never going to go back to where I what used to be because man, that old man was gone. I put on the new man and now I'm living this new life in Christ. And now I grabbed a hold of this. The greatest power source that I know of is just prayer. And that coupled those two things together. That's what drives me. And that's what drives, I think the passion in my life to do what I do and to be excited about what I do. Cause I'm not a real quiet speaker. Um, when I minister, I'm kind of a little, I'm a little, well, that's how I played football. That's how I did yeah. sports that I'm allowed to use that. And, and I like going to churches that let me do that. So anyway, that's, that's been the driving force behind my, and besides the fact, uh, marrying Jana and she's a, she's a great prayer woman, man. She just is a, she prays like, so that's to have that as your, as your co-partner and that as well is also is a great driving force, but that's kind of mine in a nutshell. That's great. And, and let me just kind of ask you this, because, you know, there's people out there right now that um, you, you would say, OK, OK, I'm not into that religion. Right. <laughs> and I yeah. know, you know, the answer to this, but somebody out there right now is hearing this. It's like, OK, OK, OK. I want to hear about football. I want to hear about the Navy. Y yada, yada, yada. But what about this thing? I, I'm not sure about religion. I'm not into religion. What are you going to say to that person right now, Brad? I would say, listen, it's not about religion. You got to understand one thing. It's it's about it's about having a relationship with Christ. And no matter what anybody else tries to tell you, whether this isn't real, the Bible isn't real. There's so many factual um, 
backings for the 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 actuality of the word of god and for who christ was so we got to get our eyes off of religion i knew nothing about religion before i got saved i didn't got didn't get caught into a denomination of any sort i just came from raw to christ and if it can happen to me it can happen to them or happen to you the person i'm talking to it's not about religion it's about having a relationship with jesus christ who came to earth to die on a cross in your place, to be your substitute, to die for your sins, to make you right with God the Father. Amen. I love that. And so somebody out there right now, and I am, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, and I think you know where, because they're out there and said, okay, Brad, I'm, I'm right where you were, right where you are. Um, what do I, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? You know, what is, the, what, is, what is my responsibility in this? What are you going to tell them? As far as salvation is concerned, yeah, yeah. What is salvation to somebody that's out here and they're going, okay, I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm listening. You got my ear. Now what? Well, the Bible talks to us about for us to be converted, for us to be saved. There has to be a couple things involved. One is repentance. So we have to come into a place where we understand, and this is what you know. You've got to have your heart open to the understanding that I was born a sinner. So I would tell the person, I know this is hard to grasp, but. The Bible tells us, and the Bible's true, it's authentic, it's God's word, tells us that when Adam sinned, sin then entered into the world. And I can give them scripture verses that say when that one man entered, and that one man sinned, he brought sin into all of mankind. So now when I'm born, I'm born a sinner. I'm not born innocent. I'm born a sinner. And I'm now separated from God. There is a gulf between me and God. This is what in this. So this is what God did about that. He thought, I don't want I want to give them a way to get to me. If this is God, the father. And here's me. There's a huge gap between us. I can't get there. I'm separated from God. If I die in this state, I'm going to be separated from God, the father forever. I need to get over there. But how, there's no way for me to possibly get there on my own. I can't give mm -hmm. enough to charity. I can't work at it enough. I can't be over. I can't be religious enough. I can't get to God, the father through this gulf, this gap myself. So God made a way. What he did was he sent Jesus to the earth to die on the cross. The cross became a bridge. Now I'm fallen man. The only way I can get to a righteous God is I now come through the sacrifice of Christ because Jesus died for my sins, took all my sin on him when he was on the cross, died as my substitute. And now because of that, I can now believe upon Christ repent of my sins, trust in Christ as my Lord and the Savior of my life. And once I've done that in my heart, I can now walk across the bridge and now I get in relationship with God the Father. And it's all because of what Jesus did. And uh, But the, the amazing thing about that is it only starts because, you know, God even starts the whole process by having the Spirit operating on your heart. But it's all about Jesus. Anyway. That's perfect. That I, I wanted to... I wanted to get there because ultimately um, this ties into my next question for you. As, as you know, um, uh, you know, our ministry here and, and it's Jesus ministry on earth. He would, he would heal people. He would yeah. heal people so that they would not die, you know, if you will, so that they could experience what you experienced. And, and I think you would agree with that statement, right? For the most yeah. part. Yeah, I do. Yes. And so with that, I mean, here you are in the ministry right now, and you look at the state of, of physical health and as it bridges to the gap of spiritual health, which we're talking about. Brad, what's your take on that right now with what you see? You travel all around. You speak to a lot of people. What's your, what's your take on that? Well, first of all, I know God's a healer, and that's not just, I mean, I read it in the Word of God. I know he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I know he healed in the Old Testament. He heals now. I believe that. You know, I saw that in the life of my daughter who was born with spinal meningitis. And, you know, I remember the doctors were freaking out about this. She was sick. She was in intensive care, you know, needles in her head and all that kind of stuff. And uh, she was in there for several weeks. And and I got so sick of this. I'm thinking, God, you're my healer. I remember walking into the room adjacent mm -hmm. to hers and getting on my knees. I was screaming. I didn't know that much because this was early on. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a lot about theology, but I was screaming at the devil, take your hands off my child, whatever. I was saying, shouting anything in Jesus' name, heal my kid, heal my kid. And I walked into the I walked into her room and I'm God's honest truth. I walked into her room maybe 30 minutes later, and the phone rang. And her neonatologist call, was calling on the phone to get a hold of me. And he said, Mr. Tuttle, I got to tell you something. He goes, that spinal meningitis we thought she had, we can't find it anymore. 
He said, you can take her home tomorrow. And so it was gone. And so I, I know. So when I pray for people for healing, I pray with conviction because I know God's a healer. But the whole thing about today, what, what refresh me what you asked me to talk about. Well, no, you're doing right. It, it's like, you know, the healing of that, even in your daughter, for example, let's say she hadn't have had heard the, the message of Christ, you know, that healing was was what God did so that she yes. could hear truth that dealt with this this other separation you're talking about, the separation between God and man, this thing called hell and sin, right? Yeah. And all of that. So, you know, that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, this is why, uh, you know, God uses people like you, like like us to bring about physical healing for people so that they can hear good news. That's kind of where I'm going. Yeah, I think, you know, if you, whether you want to call it miracles or, or, or whatever you want to call it, as far as God uses healing power to open up the eyes of people to the fact that he is the God of all power. And, you know, you really see this a lot overseas. They just, you know, you, you pray for the sick even before the gospel and they're seeing the power of God operate. You share stories with them and now their faith gets built and you yeah. they see a God that they didn't know of before. And then you, then you give the gospel to them. And it's like, man, I want that God now. Yeah. And so I think we've gotten, so I think sometimes, unfortunately, you know, my wife and I like, I love to travel out and preach in churches that allow me to move at the altar. Yeah. That, that allow me to lay hands on the sick and, you know, give words of whatever knowledge for prophets, whatever. Um, because I know it is so still active today, but I think sometimes some churches are kind of, they'll say they're, they're say they're all about all the gifts, but they don't practice the operating of the gifts. Cause there's something in there where they're a little, I don't want to say afraid of the Holy spirit. And mm -hmm. so we don't want to really test, step into that thing about, you know, what a, he's a power source for doing the miraculous, but he is. Yeah. And so I just hold that and my wife and I hold that dear to our hearts. So we know he's a God of the miraculous. And I do believe that he uses it to, to direct people's eyes to what, to the power that he has within himself. And then it opens up the door to the gospel. I, I do believe that. Now, Brad, you mentioned uh, uh, probably a difference overseas other countries and we're, we're in the United States right now and maybe a difference here in that hunger, that hunger, that awe, that wonder. Um, why do you think that is? Uh, there seems like their faith is just childlike. They haven't had all the denomination and all the religion and all the different kinds of churches and all different teachings and all the, they just had this kind of a pure faith. And when you bring the gospel to them and you, they see people truly being healed it just it it's so it's so raw and so uh, childlike that I think it they're more open to, up to to that taking place in their life. You know, I I know when I go minister at churches, you know, I've seen people even recently. I went to a church in Ohio and I was praying for the sick, and I don't do that as a show. It's not a show to me. It's like I I I don't want to be sick. I, I don't want I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to have cancer. I don't want to have. Um, you know, an insulin problem. I don't want to go through that. And that I think because I don't want that, I wouldn't want to be there. I don't want them to be there. And I think that's where that passion to pray for them to come out of that is, but man, when they start seeing, you know, a guy has his, uh, you know, he's diabetic and he has his insulin monitor and it was a hundred and some way up in whatever the scale was. And you pray for him and he goes back to his seat and he tests it. And it's like, you know, back where it's back in the, the range of normal. And, you know, you, you this, this older man just starts weeping and crying and saying, well, God's real. God's real. And it's like, yeah. yes. And, and it's almost like it brings back a freshness in their walk. Cause they're saying, wow, God is really real. Even though they may have been saved for a long time, they realize in that moment, wow, God is real. There's something about the tangible aspect of yeah. people, people being healed and see and, and observing people being healed. That's uh, really affects people. And I think right. what you do, I think what you do and the aspect of trying to get people physically well is so vital today. I don't think you see it enough in the church. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's preached enough in the church. I don't think it's taught enough in the church. And I think that, you know, I get it. We all have our number of days, but man, while I'm on this earth, I want to live out my days to, to the fullest ability that I have. And part of that is my health, how I walk out my health life. Brad, do you think that people, believers, can choose on their own merit to shorten their days based upon their choices? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that we, we make, can some, make some bad decisions that can lead to some bad consequences. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that, I, you know, I think we've had, uh, my wife and I have had this discussion many times. We've seen many people um, shorten their lives, p- potentially one fork, one spoon at a time, you know, and it's like, I, I don't understand that. And as you travel around, what's your um, observation of the general overall, you know, physical health and even spiritual health of, of America, let's say? Uh, well, don't, and aren't there statistics about how many overweight people there are in America and you see it in church and, you know, I know that genetic plays, genetics play a part in all this. And I, I know, uh, but I try, I can't, you know, this, you can't make anybody work out. You can't, mm-hmm. they've got to get it for themselves. But if I can, cause I I'm driven to this too. I've, you know, once I started working out, it's part of my life. I got, yeah. I now got him in my garage. I have a, I have a, I have a, like a CrossFit bike out there. I got my power rack. I got all my stuff, you know, and I'm not 50 anymore. So I keep working out and uh, I want to stay strong. I don't want to be a, an older person. That's weak. I want to be strong, man, strong. I want to have old man strength. And, uh, and I want to be an example to people. So when you get up in a pulpit or whatever, and you're up in front of people talking, it, it's not about look at me, but it's about there's there's a there's an aspect of oh, this guy takes care of himself. He stays fit, you know. And it doesn't matter what, what age you are, but he stays fit. And there's something I think that's that that helps catch some people because I've had people make comments. Man, I'm kind of challenged by you know the fact that you're the age you are and you stay fit like that. I I, I need to start doing something in my life because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that do nothing. I mean, right. they do nothing. And so we just need to try to get as many people instigated to that. Because again, I, I have, uh, I've been put on this earth to do what I'm called to do now. Um, and and I want to do it to the best of my ability and I'm going to be able to do it to the best of my ability. Yes. With, with excellent spiritual health, but I believe with also with excellent physical health. That's brilliant. Brilliant answer. Well said. I hope people uh, really got that and uh, encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, to listen to that over and over again, because there's 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 wisdom in that. And what you said, Brad, I appreciate because ultimately it's this this flesh suit we walk around in. It's kind of like a business card of something, isn't it? It, it represents something and it can represent um, the wrong thing. Uh, because people do make decisions, don't they, about how you look? I mean, that right or wrong, we do make these blink judgments, don't we? Yes. You know, the thing is, I work at, I'm sure it's okay. I work at a gun range. I'm a firearms instructor as well for one of my side things I do. But because I'm bigger, because I stay fit, it, 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 I don't say it draws people, but it catches people's attention. And, you know, and then they go, how old are you? And you tell them and they go, oh my gosh. Yeah. And so that whole thing now couples itself with the ability to bring the gospel in. So mm-hmm. I, there's a, there's a tie in to all that. So uh, that's why if I'm not only driven to do it for myself, but I think it's a great witnessing tool to people. Now, Brad, you do a lot of different things. I mean, you got blogs, podcasts, videos, and um, you, you do something very special on a weekly basis. It's a Facebook live prayer group. Uh, yeah. Tell everybody about that and how they might get involved in that. Cause I think you mentioned earlier that the key to consistency has been that constant communication that you've done on a daily basis with prayer. So Amen. talk about that. We do a Facebook live every Sunday morning from nine 15 to nine 45. My wife and I sit down together and do this. Oh, she just jumped in and said, hi, hi, Jana. <laughs> and- <laughs> she does it on Saturday from nine, nine to about nine forty-five. From from about nine to nine forty-five on her own. I'm at work at the range working. She does it on her own. And how would they get a hold of that? Is that through the prayer base too? Yes. So what they would need to do is they would need to My first admin. of all, hi everybody. Um, how do they get a hold of that, Jenna? How do they do that? Let me tell you. <laughs> so what they would need. <laughs> 
do is either friend me or Brad. Friend us on Facebook. On Facebook. Mm -hmm. So just send us a friend invite. You might want to instant message us and just let us know. And then we will accept it. And then from uh, the Harvest Prayer Base, we will then invite them and they'll be able to come on. And we have posted over the last few months, every single uh, prayer time that we've had. And there's a church um, in Oklahoma that I try to follow with. They have prayer every day at noon, mm -hmm. um, Monday through Friday. And so if I, if I can't go, like, let's say today I missed it, I'll try to do it tonight or tomorrow and pray along with them. Because something uh, we always say is prayer knows no time or distance. And mm -hmm. it is powerful, man, that the spirit of God moves and we are praying for the nation, uh, the president, for everything that's happening right now in the States and for law and order to for be him, established. For people to be healed. And people amen. to be healed. COVID. So, so many great things, but um, I'm going to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So people can, they need to send you a firm request through Facebook media, and then you'll accept that request and you'll invite them to the prayer groups after that, right? Yes. Yes. Got it. Now yeah. talk about the, uh, the podcast and your YouTube channel and all that stuff. How, what is that? How do they reach you and how they stay connected with you? Well, the, the YouTube channel is kind of unique. It's called shooting straight with Brad Tuttle. And I, I, I film it from the gun range. <laughs> so I kind of combine in some segments, how to shoot, and then I'll bring in a biblical lesson or I'll just yep. do a biblical lesson, but, or I'll show some shooting things. So I'm not saying it's going to only, it, it, it's for anybody because I yeah. think it's an, it's a unique setting and you hear, you hear bullets going off different places and gunfire, but I, I bring in, I'm very evangelistic with it or I'll do Bible teachings from it too, but I always try to connect the two together. And yeah. I think it's a unique way to reach a unique group of people. So that's shooting straight with Brad Tuttle. They can find that on YouTube. Um, right. And then we have our website, Brad Tuttle Ministries. That would be found through bradtuttleministries.com or bradtuttle.com. And I have a bunch of podcasts, blogs, sermons, uh, Vimeo videos, and all those that are on there as well. And we always post, if they even get on my, as my friend, we mm -hmm. post all of our videos. I put our Sunday sermons, put all kinds of videos and things on our Facebook pages as well. So we're trying to you know, we're not experts at it. We're trying to get that footprint bigger. So, hey, we're living in a day and age of social media. So that's what we use it for. Brad, what are you working on next? Any any upcoming projects, vision streams you got going on? Um, well, I know I'm, I have some traveling dates coming up. So I'm excited about that. And I'm going out of town and to do some ministering. Um, so I, I'm really excited about that. I am looking to get involved with some missions aspect next week, maybe doing a little traveling overseas and, and into these areas of the world where people don't go to, yeah. uh, if I can share, because that's what I love to do. I love to go to those weird places or those really raw places where, you know, you share the gospel with people that maybe it's never been shared before that, that gets me going. That's because I think God's given me this evangelistic gift that I, and it's, I'm, this is not in any way talking about myself, but it just gives me a boldness. I've preached in cockfight arenas in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I've preached off the back of flatbed trucks at spring break down in, you know, uh, the, that place down in Texas um, where people dress like condoms and you're out there preaching Jesus, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so I've got some, I'll, I'll go anywhere and preach it, you know, very passionately and very courageously. So yeah, we're just looking forward to that. And just the, we're kind of in this place too, where we sense God's doing something. You ever been there? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, you know, there's yeah. something right around the corner. And so we're praying that in too. So when all these other things happen, I'll let you know. Let's know. And, and we'll uh, get you back on and get an update and find out what you're okay. doing. Um, there, right now there's people out there that um, have heard you for the first time. They heard this message and they're still here. They haven't turned you off yet. Right. Okay. So they're still here. So they're like, OK, uh, now what? So, Brad, what words of encouragement are you going to share with that someone out there right now that perhaps is, has never um, a heard the gospel message? But more importantly, B, has never received or known personally and intimately the gospel message. How will you encourage that person? Well, if you're out there and you don't know Christ as your savior, um, understand one thing, whoever you are know that God loves you enough. The Bible says it. Um, yes, God is love. God loves you enough that 
understand this. God loves you enough that he literally sees you in the state that you're in. And I'll say in your lostness, so your separation from him, he loves you enough that he made a decision to send his only son to come and suffer, to be beaten, to be to be flogged, to be crowned of thorns, to, to suffer, to be spit on, to be ridiculed and mocked. He sent Jesus to come to take your place that you might not have to suffer the wrath of God, but Jesus will suffer it for you. And once Christ came, once he died on a cross, he now made a way for you to simply believe that, to trust in who Christ is, to repent of your sins, and to openly confess from your mouth that he's a savior and a Lord of your life. And if you'll do that simple thing, he will come in, the Holy Spirit will come in to live inside of you. You will be saved and you will never be the same again. You'll be in right relationship with God the Father. But here's the kicker to that. We get in right relationship with the Father, but guess what? We're never perfect. But the thing about it is now that we are sons and daughters of God because of what Christ did, and we went through Christ to get to God the Father, now as sons and daughters of God, if we mess up, because we still live in this old fleshy body and we still have these things. If we mess up, we now have an advocate, Christ the Savior. And all we got to do is confess our sins. And the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. In other words, we don't need to get saved again. We just got to get that sin situation straightened out. That's the beauty of this. To come from not being saved to being a child of God and having a loving relationship with the holy, majestic God of the universe. Who wouldn't want that? I mean, that's what he's, that's what he has for any of you that are out there. I say, just trust in Christ, confess him from your mouth, believe in him and watch what he can do in your life. And from there, before, from there, get a hold of prayer, you know, find a good place to get discipled and, and take that journey, man, and run it, run it with passion. Passion, boldness, courage, straight talk. Shooting straight with Brad Tuttle. Man, that is just great. Um, exactly what I was hoping would come across. Uh, Brad, thank you uh, from the You're bottom welcome. of my heart for uh, for coming on. And I, my prayer is today that, um, that we've all been, all the listeners will be as blessed as I've been blessed to get the opportunity to speak with you today and, and just hear a a, a really passionate man doing what he does best doing what he's called to do. So, uh, man, thank you man. so You're much welcome. by my heart. You're uh, welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today again on another edition of Healthcare's Missing Link. And one thing I always ask you to do is to uh, hit the subscribe button below and find out what and who is coming next. We'll put all of Brad's stuff down here, how to connect with him below in case you didn't listen to this all the way through, you missed it. We'll have it repeated below. And uh, one thing I always tell you to don't let anything, anyone, any situation steal your best health because there is your best, most optimum, God-designed health out there for you uh, every day if you just choose to experience it. I look forward to seeing you on next week's broadcast of Healthcare's Missing Link.